chaps. Good morning YouTubers. This should be something that interests a lot of you today. We're talking gas management and beer management. This is what you would call, uh, I guess, a, a beer delivery board, a gas board, a cellar board. So this board manages your cascales. That would pump cascales through. Keg beer. That would pump keg beer through. And more keg beer on CO2 or nitrogen without the assist pump. And over here we've got primary pumps for 60-40 and of course straight CO2. Primary regs should I say not pumps. I think this one might have to be changed as well because that hose has a cut in it. So what I'm basically going to be doing today is stripping this system off, this board, we don't need it, it's naff. Uh, we're going to be placing everything out and figuring out how much space we need for the new board which is going into the cellar next door. The new board is going to house 22 of these, oh, it might, might be 30 actually, 30 of these, tons of secondary regs, over 14 of these fob detectors, all sorts of shizzle going onto the new board. So all I need to do is figure out how much space I need for each piece of equipment and we'll multiply that by whatever we're doing for the board, whether it's the keg board, the cider board or the cask board. And then we're going to cut some plywood which is just behind you and we're going to populate the boards. All this stuff's on order, I don't have it in yet. We're going to recondition some of these old flow jet pumps and these old fob detectors. And uh, over the next couple of days we'll populate the new boards and get them in the cellar ready for the beer pythons which I've ordered from eBay as you know. So I'm going to spend the next half an hour depopulating this board and we'll come back when we start to put all of this tackle onto a new one and draw it all out. Right, so I think we're going to spend a little bit of time taking these antifobs or these foam on beer detectors, fob detectors apart so we can have a look inside and give them a scrub. So I've already done one so I've familiarised myself with the whole thing. So the first port of call is obviously just to unscrew the base and get on the inside of the whole of the of the thing. There we go. So we'll drop that in there. You can see we've got the ball. So all of this should be cleaned during the line cleaning process, or it will be in the future. But these have of course been sat with crap in them for god knows how long. So before we utilise them, I'm obviously going to give them a good scrub. So in the bottom of this section, there's an O-ring. See if we can pull this out without doing too much damage to it. Probably the wrong thing to get it out with. There we go. Yeah, it's not too bad that. I've just caused a couple of nicks on it, but it's not too bad. It's nice and supple. So we'll put the ball on the draining board in the O-ring there so it doesn't roll away. And then on this section here, there's actually just a little Allen key bolt in there to remove this oh, and also to take the handle off you have to uh, grab with some pliers of some type and to prevent the shaft from rotating unscrew the handle just like so Got that in there. Quickly remove the grub screw from the side. Now this is the tricky bit. Well it's not tricky but it's imperative that you keep it upright. Put your grub screw to one side. Now in here 
there's a spring and a ball bearing. There he is. You see that? You don't want to lose them little buggers. Spring and ball bearing. So we'll again just pop them on the sides together. There we go. Put the handle with it. And then we can push from the threaded end the uh, steel rod out. Give that a clean. Inspect the O-rings. Everything looks cushy in there. Just getting in there with my nail to pull out any any crud. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Then we're going to clean the base. There we go. Again, just shoving the uh, sponge in there to get any crud out. Underneath we can pop out the John Guest fitting. You just have to be careful you don't snap this section. So the little bit of plastic comes out. We'll give that a clean in a minute. And then in here we have another O-ring. So we've got that little fella out. Again give him a clean on the side. And then in there you can see we've got a little bit more crud on the inside of this. So we're just going to get in there with uh, a bit of screwed up sponge. Or if you had a little nylon brush, that would be sufficient. I'm sure. Out there. So all this crud building up in here it should really be eradicated with the line cleaning process, but of course this has just been sat for God knows how long in that manky old cellar. So on the top polycarbonate section, another O-ring there. Zip that out. Again, just needs a little clean. Release the schmoo. And then again, on this side we've got another John Guest fit in. Just ping him out. There we go. And now I noticed on the inlets, on the last one I did, the two O-rings on the inlet. Not quite sure why. But there they are. Oh, throwing them around. Two O rings on the inlet. So we'll get that cleaned and popped on the side. And then there's a little 316 John Guest fitting on the top. Again, with a little O ring in there. Real tiny little bugger. So we've got him out. And then where I found some schmoo built up last time was on the plunger mechanism on the top. So I figured out our way out to get this off. And if you look in the hole, there's a little hex bolt. So I've just got some screwdriver fittings and I've pieced them all together with an eight millimeter socket on one end. And that just happens to reach in I push the button down to take the pressure off the screws or the thread and yeah you can see we're just reaching up on the inside to fetch that bad boy out so we'll push that down and there we have it the little threaded whatever you want to call it and we've got a spring and an O-ring. Again, just give them a good clean. Clean the spring. And then for the top of this, well, you can see inside the whole unit, it's manky. So we're just gonna go ahead and give her a clean. That's basically as far apart as you're gonna get it. I did try removing these little sections here which hold in the John Guest fittings but couldn't get them out, I didn't want to break it. So uh, yeah, you can get a sponge in there to clean it anyway. And an assembly is obviously, just play the video in reverse and you'll see it put back together. Well while we're on the subject lads, we may as well take apart some flow jet pumps I'm looking in the viewfinder. So uh, these are from EWL, England Worthside Limited. Hey Abs. 
And uh, this one was donated to the course. No, this one's come out the cellar. I've got four that are donated to the course. They're behind you. So we may as well take it apart, have a look at how clean it is inside, and then reassemble it. I think it's pretty simple. We'll zip all these screws out on the back. One, two, five, six, seven. Nice long stainless steel screws. They're very nicely constructed, these pieces of kit actually. Surprise, there we go. Making sure you don't damage any of the innards. <laughs> hey, up. Beautiful. So you can see we've got, these are the little beer holding clips, either side. And we spilt a load of beer out of there. That's the back of the pump. Just give that a quick wash. There we go. This is one of the reasons why we're opening this. Look at the deposits in there. But it's not too much of a problem. Literally, a sponge on the inside. There we go. As good as new. So if we're going to take this whole diaphragm off, you just grab and start turning it anti-clockwise and she will unscrew directly into your hand. There we go. So we've got a little bit of schmoo behind. That's fine. That's actually going to be just a bit of grease for the shaft. So we can just inspect this now. So we've got a little bit of caked on. A little bit of caked on uh, residue. But again, if I bring it up to the camera, you can see that just with a little bit of scrubbing, most of this residue is just yeast deposit basically. You see the brown there, and just a couple of wipes with a sponge, and she's uh, she's gone. You get found out for not cleaning your lines, you see, and this stuff starts to go hard. It's like beer stone almost, yeasty beer stone deposits, and uh, that's when you've got horrible tasting beer because people aren't looking after what's in their cellar. We're in like sin. So there's a big O-ring on the floor. He sits around the edge and then on the inside you can see the gas pump mechanism. I actually had one of these come off the other day but if you get this off just have a look at that. That's how it sits. There's a nice little uh, cheat sheet for you to repair it. You can see how the two rubber grommets are top and bottom of this. There's another diaphragm at the back. So we have two active diaphragms and this middle section just chooches backwards and forwards pumping on each stroke. Well I better stop doing that. Pumping on each stroke. So we're starting to separate out all these components. There's the shaft from the centre. So let's see if we can pop this forward. Oh, beautiful. Yes. This condom is now in the erect position. There we go. It's like mummy's teat. Guy would recognise this, wouldn't he? He sucked on this for a number of years. So, uh, yeah, here we are. Give that a bit of a clean up. Mama. <laughs> Please don't talk about me when I'm gone. Oh, honey, though our friendship ceases from now on. Well, I've spent a bit of time and taken two, four, six, 
seven of those apart. All the pieces on the side here, soaking in some caustic. All the O-rings and rubbers and everything's been taken off and put in there. There's your big pile of screws. So hopefully I'll be able to put them back together without losing any gaskets or anything and uh, we'll have seven fully functioning flow jet pumps. That's the start. What I'm going to do next is start pulling this to pieces. I wonder if anybody knows anything about it. I think they're pretty simple pieces of kit actually. There's a bit of a data there's a bit of a data plate if you want to look it up. Old Evo 70. I'm sure we can get her working. Right, one thing that I've immediately noticed on this is that the uh, propeller is somewhat, shall we say, caked up with crud. Looks like a sugar donut. So I'm going to take it apart, lube it up, and then we'll see if we can get it to spin by plugging it into the quick test. But this, so far, looks okay. We have good news. I fired it up. Look down there. The ice bank is getting cold. The compressor is whisper quiet. We just need to figure out if we can sort that cooling fan out now. If not, we can always replace it. And the ice bank looks to be in good quality. So we just need to see if this research pump on the top works. And if it does, then frig yeah, we've got a four line Barchilla. Sweet! Right, I've dicked around with motor enough and I can't seem to get it to work. I think it's just an issue with windings, but I don't rightly have time pit. So we're gonna chuck this ice bank lid back in, back on, and uh, have a little bit of a play, see if uh, see if the reset pump at the top actually works. And if that works, then we've got ourselves a chiller. And for this fan, well, quite frankly, I could probably swap it out for a big computer fan. Try again with the windings. I haven't really got the patience, or fail that buy a new one of these because I think I'll find one of these on eBay but at the minute I can't I can't warrant spending the time on it so let's pump it, plug this in again and let's see if this goes might shoot some water out at the top so we'll make sure we get it in shot if it does yes yes right Unplug it. So the top flow jet pump works. That means the cooling pump works. That means everything freaking works. So uh, pull all these John Guest fittings off. Oh, they're stiff. All right, we'll come back to that then. So yes, just a few minor repairs. This is going to be a winner. Right, Gem's here. The kids are sick to death of being here with me. It's half past five, it's six o'clock actually, it's, oh, six o'clock. So it's probably best I wrap up and go home. I haven't taken them out of the building all day for the past three days, they're not gonna be happy kids, are they? So yes, what day is it? Is it Wednesday? Yeah, well, we'll see what we do tomorrow. I might take them for a walk with the dog or something at lunchtime, but I said that today and I get, so there's so many jobs, so many jobs, like hundreds now. So I think that the chances of me getting out, doing anything with them, are remote because I get just swept up in this. So we'll approach tomorrow from a different point of view, hopefully. But for now, I think we should take a moment, feed them. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.